Hi, this is Brass Check, and uh, normally we do these recordings via Skype, but we have been uh, locked out of Skype today, which is very interesting. Anyway, um, this article appeared in March of 2019, and I'm going to read it for you because I guarantee that uh, almost no one else will, certainly nobody in the mainstream news media will. This appeared in Forbes on March 4th, 2019, and the headline and the author is Stephen Salzberg, and the author is Scientists Resume Efforts to Create Deadly Flu Virus with U.S. Government Blessing. For more than two decades now, two scientists, one in the U.S. and one in the Netherlands, have been trying to create a deadly human pathogen from avian influenza. That's right. They are trying to turn bird flu, which does not normally infect people, into a human flu. Not surprisingly, many scientists are vehemently opposed to this. In mid-2014, a group of them formed the Cambridge Working Group and issued a statement warning of the dangers of this research. The statement was signed by hundreds of scientists at virtually every U.S. and European university. And... Uh, the author says, I am one of the signatories. Uh, in response to these and other concerns, in October 2014, the U.S. government called for a pause in this dangerous research. National Institute of Health Director Francis Collins said that his agency would study the risks and benefits before proceeding further. Well, four years later, the risks and benefits haven't changed, but the National Institute of Health has quietly just allowed the research to start again, as we learned last week in an exclusive report from Science's Jocelyn Kaiser. I can't allow this to go unchallenged. The research is so potentially harmful and offers such little benefit to society that I fear the National Institute of Health is endangering the trust that Congress places in it. And don't misinterpret me, I'm a huge supporter of the National Institute of Health, and I've argued before that it's one of the best investments the American people can make, but they got this one really, really wrong. For those who might not know, the 1918 influenza pandemic, which killed between 50 and 100 million people, 3% of the entire world population at the time, was caused by a strain of avian influenza that made the jump into humans. In 1918, um, the flu was so deadly that it killed more American soldiers and sailors during World War II than did enemy weapons. Not surprisingly then, when other scientists, including me, learned about the efforts to turn blurred bird flu into a human flu, we asked, what the heck would anyone, why the heck would anyone do that? The answers will, were and still are unsatisfactory. Claims such as, we'll learn more about the potential pan of the flu as a pandemic. And we'll be better prepared for an avian flu pandemic if one occurs. These are hand-waving arguments that may sound reasonable, but they promise only vague benefits while ignoring the dangers of this research. If the research succeeds and one of the newly designed, highly virulent flu strains escapes, the damage could be horrific. So this came out in November of 2019. Have you heard about it? Have any of the geniuses in the mainstream news media referenced this article? Um, this article is really only explaining the tip of the iceberg. A, uh, another scientist, and we, we ran a video on him a while ago, pointed out that over 100 billion, that's with a B, dollars have been spent to develop bioweapons over the last several decades. The U.S. is involved, Israel is involved, China is involved, and Russia is involved, and there may be some other countries as well. So that's another bit of fact that has not been shared with you. There is an ongoing, nonstop, very expensive program that employs tens of thousands of scientists all over the world. Right now, today, they're going to work to develop bioweapons. Um, Wuhan, which was the source of this particular coronavirus outbreak, is the only city in China that has a top-grade bioweapons manufacturing and experimenting a library, um, a laboratory, the only one in China. 
Uh, these, lab these laboratories are put in place with the uh, supervision and approval of the World Health Organization. They're aware of them. In some cases, they sign off on them. So the World Health Organization should have known and probably did know from the get-go that there was at least a potential that something could have escaped from the uh, Wuhan laboratory. Um, but they weren't even allowed into the country um, by, Japan, by China um, for, for many, many weeks uh, to even do any investigation. But do you think, what do you think the chances are that they are going to admit that um, there is an ongoing program to develop weaponized flu viruses? Um, it's never going to happen. So, you know, while they're breaking down um, rights and, you know, creating a panic, um, sending out test kits that don't work, um, prohibiting local health agencies from doing tests, uh, and saying only the CDC can do the test. While they're doing all that, um, this is what's been going on in the background. So that's Brass Check. You can look up this article yourself on Forbes if it's still there. Um, it's called Scientists Resume Efforts to Create Deadly Flu Virus with U.S. Government's Blessing, written by Stephen Salzberg, who, by the way, um, is a distinguished professor of biomedical engineering, computer science, and biostatistics at Johns Hopkins. So he's not a conspiracy theorist. He's just simply reporting the facts. Um, he also goes, he goes on to say something um, uh, really important here, which is that um, we don't even stockpile vaccines for normal seasonal flu because it mutates too fast, too fast, so we have to produce new vaccines every year. The idea that anyone can predict a future pandemic strain so precisely that we could design a vaccine based on the, their prediction is laughable. Uh, I can't quite fathom why the National Institute of Health seems to be so enraptured with the work of these two labs that rather than simply denying them funding, it has ignored the warnings of hundreds of scientists and now risks creating a new influenza pandemic. Much as I hate to say this, maybe it's time for Congress to intervene. Well, Congress obviously has not intervened. Um, they've done nothing uh, and will continue to do nothing. Uh, we're really on our own here. Anyway, that's Brass Check.